Hello, good day to everyone, and I welcome you to the another episode on Mold Flows Tips and Workflow. In this episode, I am going to demonstrate as well as talk about how we can automate the repetitive task in Mold Flow. I am going to show you some automation in Mold Flow using interface or automatic programming interface and scripts. This is applicable only to Mold Flow Insight. My name is Sachin Fulsundar. I am a senior technical specialist, part of the Advanced Manufacturing Solutions at Autodesk, and I will be your host for next five to six minutes. So let's go through and talk about automation in Moldflow. So first question arises: Why there is a need for automating the simulation process? We've been doing it for years together, and probably we will continue to do it. But as we know that we are squeezing on timelines, the product development is fostering at rapid speed, space, or there's a need for like an automating the repetitive task. So before I go and jump upon the what, what is the need for the automation in Moleflow, let me talk about what is, you know. application programming interface an object linking and embedding the interface which allows certain more flow functionalities to be automated can be repeated and repeated at the command supports for both synergy as well as for insight solvers as well and probably if you have been following the you know more flow discussion group you would have known that already we have custom reports aspect ratio plots part thickness and creating the multiple hot drops with fraction of seconds it can be also be used for the solidifications viscosity editing pvt pressure volume temperature you know customizations and core shift analysis as well in this episode i am trying to show you or i'll try to show you some of the custom plots as well as automating the repetitive task as well so before i go on that one a bit on to the what is api as i mentioned that it is a object linking and embedding okay and then it can be you know program with the help of like javascript python but we would be using a visual basic for the script and it can be edited with the, you know renowned scripting uh, softwares like notepad notepad++ and vb scripts whatever you want to uh, use it for editing and the question arises if something that we need to refer it for learning purpose and this is where you can refer a lot of content around the apis so first and foremost i would say that go and refer to the moleflow help it is really really has lot of lot of contents uh, before you and look for the you know external help so with that how to run the scripts in moleflow and uh, what's the procedure to run the script so question arises what is all about this so let's look at the some of the examples over here script can be run with the help of the macro probably if you are well familiar with the moleflow interface if you go into the tools tab you should get an option of running the macros or probably you can also record and store the macros as well so that's the one way of playing the macro other way is like command line within the moleflow interface it can also be run with an shell command outside of moleflow interface just like you go into the you know dos window and then you can run it from there it can be also be executed with the help of third party solutions as well So let's look at this what is all about. So you go in the tools and you start recording. So I have a imported a part and I'm trying to capture some workflow for the repetitive task. So what I first and foremost done is I assign the material 
and then I also put the injection location and most important task is the processing parameters which always uh, we tend to forget or try to refer it unless until we are doing a copy paste to it. So I created actually a, a very quick recording of the, my workflow and I saved it as a refresh analysis and also assign it to the one of the trigger button as well so next time when I come probably a trigger button like one if I run it it automatically is going to set now why I'm doing it this can be repeated for the updated part so when I'm getting a new updated part or the product design is updating the part now there is no need to panic or saying that I need to do a repetitive task over here so as soon as the part is imported, it's just a matter of like a you know, fraction of seconds. Now you open that with a button one click and you can see that everything has been set out for you, including the gate location, the materials, the processing parameters and just run the analysis. And this can be repeated multiple times unless and until the geometry is bit modified not major changes that's going through it particularly the areas where you are putting a gate location okay so this is a geometry that is going continuously changes like optimization of thickness till you've been satisfying this is a way of optimizing as well and more flow with the help of automation is helping you to do so so it's not only like a design of cement that will help you but you know repetitive tasks can be reduced with the automation of the script and you can do a multi comparison side to side as well in this case okay so running a api in more flow it's not available for everything i leave it it's a quite a crowded slide so i you can capture it and go through as per your convenience but it can be executed through the command prompt as well as I mentioned that you can just go into the your uh, user interface and then command prompt and probably you know the help one that you need it often so I just run a help command and you get all of the information about the running the different macros or you know uh, something like running a custom reports or so all of these can be you know run with the help of the micro or through the command prompt over here so let's go back and, and see that how it works into the actual uh, part so I have a like in a dual domain mesh and often when I create a report I always tend to forget one thing is the thickness that's correct so what I created is that I have created a thickness now a script which can now allow me to capture the thickness as a part of the plot so there is no chances that I would be forgetting the thickness in this case so as you can see now and that has come up very nicely and it has put it as a result as well in this case okay you can query it and the same like what we do it but here the, it has put the mesh as a shaded and very great view that has come up with the help of script the another thing that I often struggle is that when I get a part I usually try to run the analysis with the git locations but what in in something that customer needs that hey quickly can you put in a gate location somewhere here and uh, they want to know the hot gate over here and once you start the analysis so in this case what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select one of the point over here okay and some point over here and I'm going to play a macro that will allow me to put a drop over here okay. probably I have selected the multiple points that's the reason it has selected this one but no worries I will just delete it again and reassign it uh, because this 
and you can do it as per your convenience as well so just then excuse me for these I created one and I and these scripts can be edited as well as I told that the scripts can be open into the any of the any of the editors and then you can open it as per your convenience so I selected this point and now I want to make sure that I have selected only one point yes I have selected only one point and then I go to tools and play macro and uh, I'm going to play a macro for the uh, eye drops and very nicely it has created the uh, hot drop and probably I can set the injection location and then I can get started so this was very very quick on this one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some of the scripts along with this video and you may try it at your end I hope you like this video and if it are any comments do let me know thank you for your time and we'll talk to you again